All right, so I have a 2013 Honda Odyssey. Um, customer's complaint is that uh, after repairs were done, for whatever reason, at the shop, multiple times they had to take a fuel pump out and reseat it because, as we'll go up here and see, it constantly shows that there's no gas in the tank. Okay? Now, I'm a little skeptical, specifically because, uh, from what I know of older generations of vehicles, this system, that low fuel light, it blinking. Well, I have it disconnected now, so that's an open circuit problem. But if I plug it in, that stays solid, and it says it's on uh, it's on E, and I'll show you why it did that um, shortly here. Um, but there is a... Let me, let me actually show you... Okay, let me do a couple of things. Hold on. All right, so this is a fuel pump and a uh, uh, fuel gauge sending unit, right? It's a one complete assembly. The fuel pump is down there that's what that connector goes to there it sits immersed in the tank uh this one i believe is a return system the returnless ones only have one one fitting here so this is a return system the returnless ones only have one output because the regulator is inside this and so once it builds up the pressure it bleeds the rest back into the tank long story short um here's where we go with this this is the sending unit and it's a rheostat, okay? As opposed to a potentiometer, it's a resistance whose uh, contacts, right? Variable resistance. Contacts are bridged by this arm here, okay? And according to the schematics, uh, when it's full, the resistance is the least, between 9, I think, and 21 ohms. And then down all the way down here, it's between 700 and 800 ohms, okay? Now, the reason why this is important is because the light's blinking up there because the circuitry has determined that we have an open circuit uh, and there's ways to determine that. But um, what I have done here, having tested for power, right? So as you're looking at it, the two connectors are along this right side here are pins two and four. Those are one and three. Those two go to the pump. These two go to the sending unit. So if I was going to make an analog here, uh, this one is a little different. Uh, why would this one have three? Oh, on this, on this model here, I do believe uh, what turns on the light, uh, the low fuel light, is actually a thermistor somewhere that's uh, submerged in fuel. So on this style, the circuitry is a little different. You have the fuel gauge, and then you have a separate thermistor. Uh, once it's immersed in fuel, it's it's uh, resistance. I think it's uh, NF NPT. I think I can't remember. Um, I'm trying to think how this would work uh, on the fly. But needless to say, when it's in fuel. Um, the light will be off when it's out of fuel, like when the thermistor is outside of the fuel level, above fuel level, then uh, the resistance is high enough to where the light comes on. So that's why you have five pins here, but you only have four here. So basically the low fuel light is calculated based on the resistance. There is no actual sensor in the fuel um, in, in the in the fuel tank to tell you that you're low on fuel. The good thing about these systems is you could drive on the light if the sending unit went bad, you could ignore whatever the gauge said, but if that light came on, yeah, then you needed to get gas. Um, for those of you who uh, lived on the wild side, 30 miles would probably be the range once you saw the light come on. Uh, anyway, long story short, uh, here's where we're at. And so I'll probably see if I can pin an image of the specs for this. But uh, right now, like I said, they've been in here three times supposedly. And if I'm going to measure the resistance across these two uh, on this side, if I can get some cooperation between them. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do that. And then let you guys see what it shows. So you guys see that? 799, 798, okay? So I'm going to, off those numbers, believe that we have an arm that's at the bottom we don't have an open circuit um, with an open circuit and I'll cycle the key so you guys can see the circuitry at the gauge cluster work hold on all right so now we're back up front and you can see the the, the light blinking cycle the key off 
cycle the key back on. And now we'll just have a solid light, which means it's seeing the resistance, it's seeing a complete circuit, and therefore it knows that we're low on fuel. Um, we also have, uh, what do we have? I can't remember if we have one or multiple TPMS um, sensor failures. I think I have to check that. And then the uh, emissions failures are twofold. One of them we found, uh, let's see if we can see that here, uh, fuel mixture lean, and that's why. And the other one is deterioration of the bank. Ah, we found there. Where are we? This catalytic converter down here, bank two. So that's been placed on order. I do have a replacement intake tube here. I'm going to put that on real fast. Um, but let's go back here, and um, I want to see why the resistance circuit for the sending unit is at maximum. Uh, and I want to see if we have fuel in this car or not. So the customer claims that regardless of how much fuel they put in there, car ran fine. Uh, we don't have a problem with fuel delivery. We just have a problem with knowing how much fuel is in the tank. So let me get the... Uh, the ring, the lock ring tool, get some rags to absorb whatever spillage will happen. Disconnect the battery, of course, and then go from there. All right, I'll bring you guys back when I'm set up. All right, so uh, we're into a little bit of a problem here right now. I don't actually have uh, flash access anymore. No light. Okay, so I hope this will... I have a flashlight, but the lighting is just not the same. Um, see what I can do here. Now, because it's a uh, returnless fuel system, fuel pressure is regulated in the fuel tank in the sending unit, right? Post, post pump, but you know, uh, all this line right now should still be um, pressurized. Um, ideally, ideally, okay. Um, what you'd want to do is disable the fuel pump like I've done. Actually, let's do that now. Um, let me reconnect the battery and start it until it dies since there's no power. I don't know if you can see this. How did I get that? Okay. So this is the connector here. I've disconnected it. And there's no power to the fuel pump. So whatever fuel pressure is left in here um, will be used to run the engine and the engine will stall. I'll have to clear misfire codes. All right, let's do that and show you that. All right, so let's just start it and see what it does. And there was very little left. All right, so ideally what will end up happening now, uh, now I gotta disconnect the battery again, hold on. All right, we're back. So um, if you do not do that, okay, because there's pressure here, about 60 PSI under that, but what'll happen is a uh, quick, disconnect here we need some light I'm not gonna subject you to trying to see I did have a flashlight I did I promise you I did there we go all right so um, ideally the quick disconnect here would just spray fuel everywhere now it probably still might leak some so I'm gonna prepare by putting some uh, All right, okay, now, by some design metric, and I don't know if you guys could see that, this is in the trough, right? Uh, let me move back. It's pretty cool the way this is designed. So even if there was to be a fluid spill, a fuel spill here, it'll, it, the, the, the sending unit's um, lock ring and assembly is lower than the top of the fuel tank. It's a little trough, and then it drains off to the side there, and that drains out under the car. Okay, that'll fill that, but there's a little passage for it somewhere where it'll drain off. Um, there will puddle here, which isn't the greatest, but and it fills up, it'll drain out under the car. So that's cool. All right, so uh, let me pull this off. Hang on. There you go. Oh, I guess that's where a lot of it. See that? That's what I was trying to avoid. It still happened anyway. This is definitely in the line. 
Alright. Well, let's knock it out quickly. Alright, see what I'm talking about? So, it puddled over there. If you guys can see that. So I'm gonna have to clear all that, clean all that up. Alright. That's it working. Uh, I'm gonna show that over there. Uh, and you guys can't see, sorry. All right, here we go. Uh. Anyhow, what I'm doing next is I'm going to uh, put the lock ring removal, uh, lock ring removal tool. <sighs> Gently. Okay. Like that. And then. Uh, uh, all right. So I, I need two hands now because the fuel line, which is a plastic hard line, wants to interfere here and I don't want to damage it. So let me just show you guys what I'm doing here. I'm just going to use that claw tool to grab the lock ring and loosen it. And then I'll bring you back when I'm pulling the pump out. All right, here we go. Ow. Oh, All right. So, like sensing is it? Now the trick here. Let's see what this can do. There's no way I can put it so you guys can see. Oh, man, that's okay. Now the trick here now is to pay attention as this comes out. Uh, anywhere you can go and not be in the way. Anywhere, please. I don't know. All right. Anyway, let's see that. Okay. So. All right, so the idea being now is to look at the arm. Uh, it's over on this side. Okay. I don't like any of this because, yeah. All right, I do need two hands for this job. I was trying to bring you guys along so you could see what I'm looking at, but I need a light and uh, there's fuel in the reservoir. This is kind of like a, uh, what do they call that? Baffled. They call it something. Oh, come on. I can't think. I'm really frazzled. Um, uh, I'll think of the term. Let me pull this out. I've heard a lot of... Uh, a lot of builds when they use the... The 350s, wall, wall, Walboro 350s, and they put them in a what's that area called? Somebody help me here. Uh, they put them in a little place, surge, surge tank, somewhere, something. Yeah. Anyhow. Ah uh, <laughs> Anybody see what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> all right pardon pardon me i, I kind of lost it there for a minute that's kind of uncool um this tank is full yo like i don't know if you guys can see that but here's the lip all right here's my finger uh uh-huh see i see the that's it I have finger sucking the surface. Okay, uh, I'm gonna look in here, and the problem that I think I have is that the folks who kept taking this thing in and out did not know to look for that float. I can't. I can't understand. There's no float on it. How's it supposed to work? There's no float in here. Do you guys see one in there? I'm not putting my phone in there. I'm sorry. All right, no float. 
let's see if I can uh, see if I can fix this. <laughs> ah, come on. All right, so this unit that I had here that I was using to demo. Um, so I wanted to see you guys see the float, but see how the arm goes in on the side here. It is retained on this side by a uh, one-time use circlip or whatever it is. I don't know that I can take that off and reuse it. And if I do, chances are that we'll suffer the same fate as that one. This really sucks. Um, well, this one is an older generation. I do think I have a newer generation pump. Not for an Odyssey though, but let, let me see what I've got. See if I've got something that'll work here. <sighs> so I have this guy here. Um, this one is, I think, from a pilot. I don't know, but it appears that that one-time use circlip is, I guess, for all intents and purposes, when it comes to the factory installs, uh, the name of the game. I don't even know if these floats are the same density, same same height, weight, thickness. I don't know. Um, I'll try and cannibalize one. I don't know what I should do here. I don't know what I should do here. Because if I, I mean, this is a demo, but if I take that off, you don't get, like, if I had taken that off, you guys wouldn't see this. All right, let, let, let me decide what to do here. Okay, so this float is two inches wide, uh, and then the arm, uh, uh Come on, come on, come on. It's about a uh, half inch. No, three quarters of an inch. Okay. Alright. Uh, what we got here? Uh, come on. That's two inches. Uh, I don't know. It might work. But, do I have any way to secure it on the end of that? I do believe this fuel pump is aftermarket. And my problem here is, I don't know where that float went. So, I mean, even if I... Even if I were to put this float on this fuel pump, that would fix my problem. Or would it be, perma would it be a permanent fix? Okay, here's what I could do. Uh, I need this to move the van anyway. I need the pump, right? All right. I'm going to cannibalize this old fuel pump. I'm going to see if I can get this float to fit and put it together. See if the gauge acts right. And we go from there. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I mean, there's proof now. I'm going to offer the customer the option to replace his fuel pump because I can't guarantee that the float will stay on. Um, and so I'll get paid for this. If the customer wants a fuel pump, then we'll put a fuel pump in later. I think I'll do that. All right, let's go. I did, su I did have such grandiose plans until I realized why that end was flattened right there. That's what's supposed to have retained the ring. I don't know how it came off of the, the, the one we're looking at, but if you look right there, see that's flattened? I don't know how I can get this ring off of this one. Ah! Alright, it's uh, cold. It's actually windy out here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But, uh, phone died and I had to get it charged, so let's do this. So I have two fuel pumps. Um, the one you guys saw, my little demo unit, and the floats. Uh, range between two inches and two and three quarter inches. The one that you guys saw was the only one that kind of worked. Once I pried that little ring off the end, it would not go back on or stay on. And I'm like, okay, I don't want this float to fall off. So um, I zip tied it, cinched it down real tight so you can see there that it's, uh, come on, focus. Right? So it's kind of secure. Um, now, I do not know that this uh, zip tie is gasoline resistant. Um, so that's the gamble I'm going to have to take right now. Um, I'm going to 
Oh, falling. Oh, I'm gonna put this in here. I need two hands. Can somebody come and help? Let's see. We have a stand here. Uh, let's see what you guys can help me with here. Hang on. Uh. All right, so I don't know why it cut off, but it cut off at the perfect time for me to get back to work. Um, I did cinch this down. This kind of rotates. I guess there's a little friction washer up the top here. I, it's supposed to be an anti-friction washer if I were to guess, but um, I try to get this as straight as possible over there. Um, I got it cinched down. I'm gonna plug this in and remove a little gas soaking. Ah, oh, shoot. There's a lot of gas over there, man. I don't want the interior of the car to be smoking with this. Out. More. Let me get something else in here to soak it up. Ah, hang on. All right. So I'm going to leave this access panel access panel off. I'm going to put this outside. I'm going to crack the windows. I'm going to leave it outside. And hopefully, I mean, the, the interior is going to smell of gasoline. Uh, that's one of the things that this uh, little... Actually, you know what? You know, I'm going to put it all together. Put it outside. Because the underside... This, this is the undercarriage of the car. All right, so we're kind of dry-ish over there. This is the undercarriage of the car. And so if I seal this up with the this little lid here, I think we'll be good. We'll uh, not have a lot of this venting into the car. Have a little seal right there. I think I'm gonna do that. I really don't like I don't like uh, gas fumes in the car because you can't really tell if something's leaking after the fact. I think. Yeah, there are many things I need to do. I need to make sure there's no leaks here when I start and run it. Hang on. All right. Uh, Okay, what do we have for fuel? Amazing, it works, huh? I don't know how accurate that is now. I know it's not full full, but you guys see that? All right, so no uh, warning light, gauge reads okay. Um, I'm gonna start it. Uh, I did that because it was, uh, and I'm probably, well, I don't really care about the other check engine lights now because we still have the intake tube to put on and we still have the catalytic converter. Um, what I want to do is make sure I don't have any active leaks from here under pressure. And then I'm going to have to hope that um, I have enough uh, torque on the uh, fuel pump to the, to the fuel tank to prevent an evac leak. So I'm going to button this all up and um, park it outside. Uh, let all these vapors uh, go away. And then... Uh, Actually, I think I can put the intake tube on tonight and we'll order and then uh, put the catalytic converter on later. So as far as this problem, we are done. See you guys later. All right, it's just a shout out to uh, Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Um, the intake tube we re referenced earlier, I've swapped that out. Uh, it didn't take long. Just two band clamps, five and a half millimeter uh, little hex heads right there. A little hose clamp, swap it out. It's not a big thing. This is why it was running lean. Uh, the fuel gauge is not working, as you guys have seen. Um, I'm going to park it outside because the fumes, and it's cold. All right, so now we're finally, well, shoot. Got to wait for the catalytic converter to come in. But we're done for tonight. All right, see you guys later.